Am Pony, aka Wandering Pony, and how does the Everest Base Camp Trek stack up against the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu? Let's talk about it. So I've been solo hiking for many years, but I just started like international trekking last year. I went to celebrate my 40th birthday, I went to the Himalayas to hike to Everest Base Camp. So I kind of started with like one of the biggest bucket list ones. Eh, it seemed like the right thing to do. You know, 40 is really big. I'm like, I gotta do something epic. And then to celebrate 41, I went to Peru and hiked the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. And are there more adventures coming up? Of course there are. But let's just talk about those two trails and how they compare. Because as soon as I got back from Peru, several people asked, what were the differences? Like which one was harder and all that? So the short answer is they're very different. So it's a little difficult to compare, but Honestly, base camp is harder. So I do think most people would guess that base camp is harder and they're right, uh, but they're, they have their own challenges. They're very different trails. So base camp is much longer. We didn't get to base camp until the eighth day. We were in the mountains for 12 days. Um, so that's just a much longer trip in general. I was on the Inca Trail. We reached Machu Picchu on the fourth day. Now, in either case, you could do a little, I believe, longer or shorter, depending who you book with. Um, but I think both of those numbers are pretty standard. For me, the big like reason, like the deal breaker <laughs> that made base camp so much harder was the second day, which I'm gonna tell you about because I watched every video I could find about base camp before I left and no one talks about the second day or they don't get specific. Okay, so the second day you go to Namche Bazaar and this means that you walk up stone stairs that are all different heights for two hours and it is relentless and every step you take is higher than the one you took before it. Um, the second day of the Inca Trail is also difficult when you're hiking to Dead Woman's Pass, but it is not nearly as relentless as the stairs to Namche. There are moments where it's flat or just not that inclined and there are far, far fewer stairs on the way up to Dead Woman's Pass versus the way up to Namche Bazaar. Now, I don't have a number for you how many stairs there are, I did not count them, but I can tell you, even if even if someone gets in here, because I know you all like to do these things and you've looked it up, even if the Inca Trail had more stairs, it doesn't feel like it because they're more spaced out. I'm telling you, the hike up to Namche is relentless stairs. Be ready for that if you're going. You absolutely should go, but just be ready for that if you're going. No one on the videos I watched talked about all those stairs. That's why I'm telling you, train the stair machine. Do not be surprised like I was. So another difference besides just how long the trek is, um, base camp versus the Inca Trail. Uh, on, base t on the way to base camp, you stay in tea houses. So you're in an actual building. Um, they are simple buildings, but they are buildings um, nonetheless. Whereas on the Inca Trail, we stayed in tents. And that was actually my first time staying in a tent. And it's not my favorite thing when it rained. That was a little unfortunate, but overall, eh, I would do it again. It was cool. I went to base camp with a company called Intrepid and Intrepid did not provide food on the hike, which was fine. I knew it going in. So that meant that every time we went to a tea house, we would order what we wanted to eat that day. Again, this is different than the Inca Trail. Uh, I went with G Adventures and that again, is just a very different setup. There's not places to stop and eat where we were in the Andes. So they have the porters and the chefs all come with you and they make your meals and they were delicious. I also enjoyed the food in the tea houses and I will use this opportunity to tell you, make sure you eat because I had no appetite for like the first couple of days and I had no energy because I had no appetite. So seriously, make yourself eat. Another big difference between these two treks that I don't see people talking about is humidity. On the Inca Trail, it, we weren't there during, you know, it was not summer, it was not like super hot or anything like that, but it was still, there was just a lot of moisture in the air. So I actually got a couple of blisters, which did not happen on the entire trek um, to in the Himalayas, because it wasn't, it was drier, it was much drier. My sleeping bag too, I'm gonna be honest with you, my sleeping bag is filled with down and it took on an odor when it was in Peru. And I do believe that was just a reaction to the humidity, because when I got it back here to Vegas, to the desert, that odor is gone. So humidity is something to factor in. Just saying, make sure you bring band-aids or whatever it is you use to treat blisters. Now know also that because of that humidity, you're going to sweat a whole bunch. So a friend of mine had advised me, she did the Inca Trail shortly before me, and I asked if she had any tips and she said, they're going to be trying to sell you Gatorade, buy it. Don't just drink water. Now, of course you can bring electrolytes as well. I don't love the taste of electrolytes. So I actually did use them in the Himalayas and I do find them helpful, but because it was readily available, I just purchased Gatorade while I was uh, on the Inca Trail. And I do think it helps versus just drinking water because again, you're gonna sweat a lot. So obviously in general, I would say the Himalayas are colder than Peru. Um, it depends what time of year ago, what kind of weather you're going to have. But so those were two very different things, being dry and cold in the Himalayas and being endlessly wet and not nearly as cold in the Andes. 
Although make no mistake, the Inca Trail can still get cold. Something else I would warn you about in the Inca Trail that nobody talks about, all the stairs going down. You're gonna walk downstairs for hours. And if like me, you went when it's kind of starting the rainy season, they might be wet and covered in rain. And some of them are slanted downwards, so you're not even stepping on a flat surface. Did I wipe out a couple of times? Yes, I did. So be careful, use your trekking poles, just so you know, expect that. Lots of stairs down. Obviously, base camp is at a much higher elevation, so that's something to be ready for. I believe base camp is at 17,598. Uh, as far as feet go, um, whereas the Inca Trail, Machu Picchu itself is not even high, but the highest point that you'll hit before you get to Machu Picchu is Dead Woman's Pass, which is a little under uh, 14,000 feet. I did take Diamox on both trips or acetazolamide. Um, I had a prescription and had it with me when I traveled there. Could you pick it up when you get there to, in Kathmandu or in Cusco without a prescription? Yes, you could. And now I would also say if you forget any gear or if you just don't want to bring it with you, can you buy anything you would need in Kathmandu or Cusco in either of these treks? Yeah, 100%. You could totally, they know who's coming. They know hikers are there, especially in Kathmandu. Um, they have shops and shops and shops just filled with hiking gear. I didn't see as many of them as Cusco, but I saw them. They are there. Something that is different about the Himalayas is remember that to get to the Himalayas, you're going to have to fly to Lukla. The, the flight, I think this flight's like 25 minutes, but our plane sat like 20 people. And the weather, like when you're at an airport that, that that's at that high of elevation, it's like they just fly when they can. So a lot of people, flights get delayed for very long time. We got super lucky and ours weren't bad at all. Um, and I know being on a tiny plane with that short runway like scares the heck out of a lot of people. You can, I think Lukla is listed online as like the most dangerous airport in the world sometimes. Um, so that's a big difference between uh, EDC and the Inca Trail. That is, you know, that might be pretty intense for some people. There also are suspension bridges. That's another thing that some people find really intense uh, on the Himalayan Trail that the um, Inca Trail didn't really have. So one more thing to bear in mind. EBC is also more expensive. I think I paid about 1600 about there when I went with Intrepid. I did throw on some extras, just be aware. Like um, I had them throw on extra hotel nights and stuff. And then also uh, transport from the airport and to the airport. I believe, how much was, I think the Inca Trail was like 13 and with G Adventures. And again, I have good things to say about both companies. I had really good experiences. And with G Adventures also, I threw on some extras. Like I don't wanna mess with getting to and from the airport. So they will take care of that for you. It's just an extra fee, which is fine with me. So I obviously Basecamp is more expensive, but it is a longer trip also. So if you can do either of these treks and you want to, I encourage it. I'm saying go for it. I had a great time on both of them. They're insanely beautiful um, and just amazing memories and absolutely worth all of the work. Neither one is easy. They're uh, Like I said, they're difficult in different ways, but they're both totally worth it. Um, totally check it out. I, again, I had good experiences with both Intrepid and G Adventures. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep trekking.